Tom here from Warren Systems. We're going to dive into making the VLANs work with Unify, XCP, and G. But once you get the concept down, you can apply this to other switches. And this is a follow-up to the video I just did yesterday, and I'll leave a link to that one below, for how to build your open source lab with XCP and G. So if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you like to hire a share project, there's a hire us button at the top. If you want to support this channel other ways, there's some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And yes, the shirts are there too. Uh, we, they're all available through Teespring, or at least the, some of the ones that are on there. Uh, that's ever changing. So check that if you are interested in some of the shirts you see on the channel. All right, let's dive into the lab. Walk through the setup. So this is our brief overview, not every exhaustive detail, everything on the network. Maybe I'll do a tour later, uh, but for now, what's relevant in terms of this video. So we have a physical PF sense uh, running at the head end of our building, the native VLAN, as in the marked in red here, it comes out of the PF sense and starts going in all the different switches that are involved here. Now, the important part is the setting on any of these switches for each one that plugs into my network, the setting is going to be all. And we're going to ignore these right here. I mean, those do exist on the network, and these are the free NAS and the tank ones, and I've talked about them in the past. But for focusing on this, all these red means everything and every connection between every switch is set to all. The important reason I'm bringing that up, this is frequently where people get stuck on VLANs, is they start messing with the settings between switches. And all switches, you need to pass all the traffic past each one. If you started messing with or only tagging certain VLANs, well, they're not going to propagate across all the switching network. And the way that our system here, this is the lab system I built in that video, this system has one physical network connection. It is an SFP plus at 10 gig. It is connected to our Unify 16 port 10 gig studio switch, which is actually why you probably hear a little bit of ambient noise, the fans running on it from using it. The are a little bit louder than the other switches, but not much. But that's why you may hear a little bit of uh, fan noise in the background, plus the server is sitting there running on it, this particular server right here. Inside of it, and we went through this yesterday in the video, we went through how to define all the VLANs. So even though there's one physical, there's some virtual network cards in there, and they are assigned a PF sense. You don't define the VLANs, not the way I prefer to set this up, and it's an easier way to support doing it this way. Inside a PF sense, we're not defining in our virtual PF sense each one of the VLANs. We define them inside of the XCPNG lab server. We tag the VLANs and then present them as network adapters to PF sense. So, what am I talking about and what does it actually look like? So, right here we have 10 gig native, Studio 100, Studio 200. How does PF sense see them? XN0, XN1, XN2. So, Pulling from my native, it actually gets an IP address from my upstream, PFSense. It gets an IP address of 192.168.3.195. So 195 there, and then LAN and LAN 2. This is where it's actually handing out addresses. And it's pretty simple, and I've done this before. You just kind of lay things out on a spreadsheet sometimes helps quite a bit when you want to make sure you don't have a collision of things. So here's the native VLAN or VLAN 1. VLAN 69, we're just not using it, but I mentioned it exists. VLAN 20, in case you see it and want to know what it is. Then VLAN 100 and 200. Now, VLAN 100 and 200 is not defined in my PF sense. Let me scroll up to the top here. I've only got the native VLAN. There's other things in here that aren't relevant to the video, but we don't define the VLANs in our PF sense. The reason why, I don't want PF sense handling these at all. I want them just to be VLANs that can propagate across the network. But we do have to define them to make them propagate properly across the network over in Unify. So we go over to Unify, we go over to Networks, and here's those Studio 100, Studio 200 VLANs defined inside of here. Now let's go back and look at the connections inside the system here. So if we go back to Devices and we look at our Lab 10 gig, pop that out. Oops. Lab 10 gig, here's where it uplinks to the back end, just like we show here, it's uplinked to this 10 gig studio in Iraq. And this is just a CAT 6A connection. And once again, the setting is all, all. So then it goes to the unified 16 port here. And then we have a 10 gig connection here with an SFP plus. So this is where that lab server is plugged in. And I still have it named for the old lab server. Well, for uh, naming, cause the i71 is dead. 
it has been commandeered for another purpose, we'll just go ahead and do that. But you notice the switch port is all, and if you look at this one, switch port all. That's an important thing when it comes to VLANs is making sure that is set because we let the system, in this case XDPNG, slice up the VLANs to be however they want. But what about if I want to assign my laptop, and we'll look at that real quick here. We have this blue network cable, which you can see, I don't feel like zooming in over there, is attached to port two of my studio switch and not plugged in anything right now. So what we wanna do is go into, and we have our PFSense booted up, and we see that it's got 192.168.40, and 40 is assigned to the second network adapter, right here, XN0, and the second network adapter is Studio 100. So how do we get Studio 100 assigned to my laptop? How does my laptop work behind a virtual PFSense for lab testing? Or really anytime we're building out some type of network? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We're gonna go over here and we'll find the Studio switch that that's on. So we'll pop that out and we'll mouse over. And we see we have Tom Laptop, I already named it, where my laptop's gonna be plugged in, and Studio Profile VLAN 100. So we'll just edit it real quick to show you because we have these defined right here. I could make it 200, 300, or one of the other networks, but we made it 100 because that will bring it all the way back from this switch. So it's actually hopping through quite a few things. So if we look at it here, it's hopping back through this, uh, through this, and all the way back through all of these. But every one of these unified switches is connected all, all between every single switch. Therefore, it will bring that all all until it gets to that final port where it splits it out and goes, all right, you get VD VLAN 200 on there. So to show it in action, we'll plug it in and we'll watch the network change. And IPA, there's my 192.168. 40.123, right there. Pretty simple. So how did it get that? Well, back over to PFSense, go in the lab, go to services, DHCP server, we'll take a look at it. Hey, look, pop top 480, and there's the IP address assignment, and now my laptop is behind a virtual PFSense. Now, you gotta remember one thing about VLANs. You are sharing bandwidth between all the other networks. So even though I do have a one gig connection, uh, this is still shared between all the other traffic that does come across there. And some of these switches, although I'm connected at 10 gig with the main server, uh, some of these switches only have one gig connections between them and you're trunking everything across. So that is a shared medium, something to think about with VLANs. Also, anything on the native VLAN, when it's passing all, this is an important thing to think about from a security standpoint. Let's say you want to have all as going across and someone's able to put a sniffer on that all. The other encapsulated within there are all those other VLAN tags. So a all tap will be able to see if someone were to intercept all the in-betweens uh, of network because what VLANs do is they encapsulate it all into a single network stream. That's why it's passing that full network stream all the way across in its own virtual LAN. But something to consider from a security standpoint that yes, when you do that, anyone who also has the all tap can also pick out all the VLANs because you're passing them along. This is why sometimes when you um, are setting up devices, you may not want to send all and you may want to filter it down. Or in this case, we filter it all the way down to 200, which I'm sorry, uh, Studio VLAN 100. But this is what allows that to work and be able to trunk it down to the one piece. And it's just some considerations when you're doing design. And of course, just to show you real quick, none of these VLANs are defined inside of PFSense because there is some incompatibilities between the way XCPNG presents network adapters to get the VLANs to work properly inside of PFSense. But I don't think that is a big deal at all because anytime I wanted to find more VLANs, I just go and define them as network adapters. Go over here to hosts, I'm sorry, pools. And you can just define each network adapter with each VLAN that you want. To me, that's one of the simpler ways to do it uh, from a management standpoint. I let the hypervisor, or as they refer to an XCPNG, DOM0, the hypervisor is going to be defining all of the VLANs and taking care of all of it. And like I said, you can see these are all on ETH0, each one of these VLAN defines. Uh, so it keeps it pretty simple. It's pretty easy to manage and you know which one's which and you know keeps your sanity for as far as labeling. So. Pretty straightforward on how to do that. And this works, of course, even cross labs. So what we're gonna do is unplug this and we'll show how we can go from this lab to my other lab and exactly the same concept. So we're gonna go here. All right, so this is a separate lab server. 
So we have, well, lab and production. I got a lot of different things running in here. So here's our lab system. Here's a separate system. Now, where does this live? We go over here. We actually have the VM running on here, but once again, we have a network card with all VLANs coming out of, it's actually another 10 gig connection. So it's connected to this 10 gig switch. This is connected to this 10 gig switch, all, all back over to here. So now we have PF Sense running on the lab box in a studio physically behind me. And then this is in our rack in the back. And uh, let's change the network. So instead of this, and we don't have even the network's name 100% the same, but we do have the VLAN tags the same, because obviously it has to match. Let's set this to Studio 100. And these pools have no relationship to each other. This one's running um, a different, for, well, they're both running, one's running 8.0 still, another one's running 8.1 over here. So once again, kind of doesn't matter. The point is that they're both connected uh, to the same network with all, and we're letting XCPNG handle the actual trunking of the network to give it an assignment. And if we do IPA, here we are, 192.168.40.124. And if we go to our PF Sense, go back over to services, DHCP server. Hey, look, Debian 630 host is now popped up on there. So pretty straightforward how to do that. And if I wanted to plug my laptop back in, which I did unplug it, um, it would be able to ping it and talk back and forth and I would be on that same network. So hopefully it gives you an idea of how all the networks work. It's pretty straightforward once you get used to it, but the first time you get start using VLANs, they can be very daunting, very confusing. But once you start playing around a lab, and that's kind of the big point of having a lab, whether you're building one at home uh, or building one in your office because it helps with client testing. And we actually use this quite a bit for client testing because we have to build out and match networks before we program equipment and send it out to clients. We will test it in our lab here and we'll match their network settings with this process. We'll grab a group of ports, assign it the Studio 100, for example, and you've seen setups on this channel where we've had all the stuff laid out here. Frequently, we'll just build something in our lab environment that matches their network so we can have all the IP ranges and everything assigned and everything else exactly how their network would be set up so we can go through and configure, test, box, ship, and get something going. The last little piece I want to cover is because someone's going to say, Tom, you're just such a Unify fanboy. Will this even work with Mikrotik? Why not? Why not show you Mikrotik real quick here? Because I got one. And I need to do some more demos on this. Uh, it's been on my to-do list. But we have a Mikrotik with SFP 10 gig cord right here. Let's go plug it in and uh, see what happens. All right, we plugged the Mikrotik in. It is, let's go to the SFPs. We have one connection right here, and it's physically plugged into the Unify switch. Let's show where it's plugged in over the Unify switch. We'll go over to here, close this, go here, pop it out, and right here. This is where the Unify switch is plugged into the Mikrotik. So once again, I'll just wiggle the cable so I don't have to go all the way back there but you can see it physically plugged in and it goes into this port on the Mikrotik switch. Now what we have here is a 10 gig SFP plus adapter to RJ45 plugged into port one. So there's the physical port that that's plugged into. And uh, let's go ahead and change Mikrotik to the same thing. So we go over here to the VLAN. This is uh, the switch OS. So the switch OS is a little bit easier to use with Mikrotik than the other system is it serves their uh, their full OS. I kind of like it a lot better because um, it's faster to do things like this. So we're going to take and that's SFP one. So this is where it comes in. We leave it uh, VLAN receive any. You could say only tagged, only untagged. You can do the filtering here. You can force VLAN IDs. I'm not going to dive into that. I'll maybe do another video on the switch OS. Um, but as far as just taking and taking one port and assigning it a VLAN tag. Yeah, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna go ahead and assign this one VLAN 100. So that's it. Uh, it was when you started 200, you just hit apply. One thing I will say for Mikrotik is they apply really fast to the web interface. So there's not like a delay or a pause. So bonus for that. So we'll go ahead and assign it that. And now we are going to plug in a network cable to my computer here and plug this into that port right there. And we'll see what IP address I get. Oh, uh, exit. And once again, I got that 40.123. So let's unplug it. You'll see a little thing change at the top here. 
Now I'm unplugging it that way my computer releases the IP address and we can change it again. So now we're going to switch it to 200. Apply. Pretty simple. It's now set to 200. My computer's released the IP address. We're going to plug it back in so it gets a new one. Now the 200 is Studio 200. So we have the all coming in on, go back over to the micro tick, all coming in on SFP4 and we're splitting out only 200 right here. And if you remember over in our lab, in the XCPNG lab here, console, the 200 was assigned to XN2 and it's a 10 dot address that's right here, which means my computer now has a 10 dot address inside of PFSense. So yes, you can mix and match between uh, brands when you wanna bring these over. And it's gonna vary, of course, setups is, uh, this is the MikroTik one, and like I said, maybe I'll do a video a little bit on the Switch OS because it does work a lot better, I think, than the full MikroTik one. I, I'm going to say better. It's easier to understand. Better would be the wrong words. Um, easier for people to uh, get started because you've seen how quick I was able to just tag a VLAN on there. I believe there's several more steps, but it also could be my lack of knowledge on how the MikroTik uh, full OS, the router OS, works. Uh, I'm just not as familiar with it. Uh, MikroTiks are inexpensive, so do make a pretty good device in terms of home labs, in terms of cost, but they come at the expense of being a little bit more difficult than the Unify platform to uh, set up and manage. So, But hey, they, they got a good price and this is still a killer deal. I have a review of this switch. It's a killer deal on a 10 gig switch uh, when they're in stock and available. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I will leave a link in the forums to that layout, the map, and uh, someone asked me for that template. Uh, I can leave links to all this. It'll be a forum post that'll be in linked in this video. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.